So I'm Professor Reid Stewart, I'm Professor of Geoscience Communication at Plymouth University. I guess in terms of volcanoes, the obvious ones would be things like uh, Naples from Vesuvius and the Bay of Naples, which is right beside. Earthquakes, uh, something I'm very interested in is Istanbul, which is waiting for a big earthquake and it sits on a, a very active fault line. But to be honest, you know, we're, the, the, with the increase in urbanisation and population, there's lots of places now on the planet, unfortunately, that sit in danger zones. Yes, yeah, so Scotland's got lots of these things that stick up in their volcanoes. It's very cool. They're very old. Um, you know, 300 million years for some of them. Some of them are only, only 50 million years. Um, and the point is that although right today we're far away from plate boundaries or, or anywhere that's got lots of active activity, that's not the case in the past. And so in the past, Scotland was more like where Japan is today or or something like uh, Iceland is today. So uh, we shouldn't see any volcanoes erupt because we've moved away from the, from, the mant uh, from the magma that's sitting underneath. So it should be pretty safe. Should be. That is such a good question. Okay, so the, the, some science is coming out now saying that we should have gone into the Ice Age, that uh, the natural cycles if we hadn't messed around with them, would have been sending us into the cold phase. Um, but with global warming, we've actually put that off. And so this is a huge research topic now about how much we put it off for. Um, probably many thousands of years, but some people are even saying it might be tens of thousands of years. So it depends how you look at it. In that sense, it could be that global warming, warming has saved us from the freezer. But on the other hand, global warming is clearly going to have big problems in certain parts of the world. Wrong science and disaster movies. Uh, maybe, but actually I tend to think that it's a more of a use than anything else because more people have seen those disaster movies than have seen science ones. So usually you can use the movie as a, a kind of way of, a gateway into talking about it. So San Andreas the movie is a classic example. She's got terrible science in it. But actually because of that, it's a, it's a way to talk to people and try and get, if you like, better science out there. How do you date a rock? Well, I'm presuming not in a romantic way, we're meaning in a chemistry way, how you date a rock. Okay. 